Turkey last week invaded northern Syria. It's aimed to create a 32-kilometre-wide safe zone along the border so it can, it claims, send back 2 million Syrian refugees that are now in Turkey. But Turkey also wants to clean out one particular Kurdish militia there, a group which helped the US to destroy the Islamic State, but which Turkey says is linked to the Kurdish PKK, a Stalinist group that's committed suicide attacks in Turkey and elsewhere overseas to gain independence. And even Australia lists the PKK as a terrorist organisation. But, yes, this Kurdish militia did also help the US to destroy the Islamic State. And so US President Donald Trump is accused of selling out the Kurds by not having US troops stop Turkey, which is a NATO ally, by the way, from invading Syria. In fact, Turkey pulled out US troops from that area, which didn't actually take long because there were only about 200 there to start with. Not much to stop Turkey, let me tell you. But Trump has now sent Turkish President Erdogan a pretty amazing letter where he says, don't be a tough guy, don't be a fool. And he tells the Turkish president, let's work out a good deal. You don't want to be responsible for slaughtering thousands of people and I don't want to be responsible for destroying the Turkish economy. And I will, by which he means sanctions. I'm joined now by the Turkish ambassador to Australia, Kohan Karakosh. Ambassador, thank you so much indeed for your time. What is your response to Donald Trump's letter? Is your president just being a tough guy and a fool? Uh, good evening, Andrew. Uh, uh, let me correct uh, one thing before from the beginning. This is not an invasion. We call it an operation to eliminate a, lo a long-standing terror threat adjacent to our borders. It's very much, it's, it is very much in line with the Article 51 of UN Charter and with the Adana Agreement we signed with the Syrian government in 1998. So, uh, as for the letter, uh, 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 well, it, it, uh, at the first glance, uh, it looks like a series of uh, uh, tweets we are used to see uh, from President Trump every morning. It's, it's like a three set of, ser uh, three set of tweets uh, in the form of a letter. Uh, it is a bit bizarre uh, as for the language. Uh, uh, as for the content, uh, Andrew, uh, I think the first part, destroying the Turkish economy, etc., uh, we believe uh, the U.S. and some other countries need to shun the idea of sanctioning Turkey and uh, follow a, a results-oriented approach so that we can find uh, a common way uh, in Syria. And, and for the second part, which is about uh, negotiating terrorists, uh, the Turkish state never negotiate with them. Uh, so uh, for us, uh, for us, uh, it's a non-starter. And, and I believe this letter is leaked for some domestic consumption, Andrew. Uh, and the answer from our side, of course, the, 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 the principle of Turkish foreign policy is reciprocity. Uh, but uh, I believe the answer is already given uh, because this letter is dated 9 of October. And, uh, and that's the day we started with our operation uh, in the northern Syria to eliminate terrorist elements. And I think this is, this, this is the answer uh, to that letter. If Donald Trump had said in his call to your president, uh, what was it, a couple of days before this operation started, no, I will not move my 200 US soldiers out of the way, uh, would Turkey still have invaded northern Syria? Uh, the, 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 the only condition for us to stop this operation is the removal of, of terrorist elements from the said area uh, with their heavy weapons. Uh, I'm saying with their heavy weapons because they were provided with heavy weapons uh, in order to fight ISIS. And, and through that, they were given the chance to oppress local people in the northern part of Syria and to create a more fertile ground for their terrorist activities in Turkey. What evidence do you have that this um, Kurdish group, the main militia group, that you want to clear out of this region, what evidence do you have that is actually linked to the PKK, which is a, a Turkish-based group? It has been listed as terrorist by the United States, by Australia, obviously by you. Uh, it's killed uh, many, many thousands of people. What evidence do you have that there's a link between the two groups? Uh, Andrew, um, I'm, I'm a bit surprised uh, that uh, not so many people... Uh, really know about uh, uh, what PKK PYD is in this part of the world. 
They have been waging uh, a bloody insurgence in the southern eastern part of Turkey for more than three decades now. PYD is the militia branch of PKK in Syria. And uh, if, the, the, if those who have doubts can check the CIA fact books, they may refer to the hearings in the U.S. Senate, and, uh, and they, may also, they may also refer to the reports of Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch. There is no doubt that PYD is the militia branch of PKK in Syria. Now, there have been reports already um, since the Turkish troops moved over the border of a Kurdish politician, uh, Kurdish soldiers being executed by the side of the road. Can you confirm that? No, I cannot confirm that. I, I haven't got... received a, a detailed report on, on, on the phases of operation, but what I can tell you is that the number of civilian casualties in Turkish territory I believe it's higher than the ones in the operation area. Now, Australia's obviously got uh, more than 60 women, children, wives and children, former Islamic State terrorists in a prison camp in northern Syria. Um, what guarantees are you giving of their safety? Well, this, this camp is beyond the operation area. But even, even um, I mean, if, if I mean, the, the only way for, for, for them to be released is the intentional, uh, intentional, uh, uh, implementation by, by, by the PYD terrorists, because these camps are beyond the operation zone. And uh, in, this part of the, uh, in, in this part of Syria, there are some coalition forces already present in the area. So they shouldn't let uh, this happen, and they should prevent, they should prevent PYD terrorists to release uh, those families and children, as well as uh, other detained ISIS uh, militants. Ambassador Kotan Krakosh, thank you so much indeed for your time.